we're going to do now is take a look at how you can create and make API calls as part of your journeys. So to do this, we've started off and we're in our project dashboard, but what we're actually going to come do is come into the API testing module. And this enables you to be able to create API collections. And what we're going to see is then how you can embed those into your functional tests. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to create a folder. So let's call it API and let's save that. So we've created a folder into which we can put our different API requests. Now note that just before we do this, you can actually import existing Postman collections. So if you have a JSON collection from Postman, you can import those directly in. In this case, we're gonna go ahead and create them manually. So let's go and create a request. And this is for an API call, we're gonna to call to create users. Okay, now we're gonna use a testing site, which is called recres.api. I -N. And this enables us to make a series of different API calls. In this case, we're going to look for one to get a single user to call and get details to a particular endpoint that will then enable us to get some user details. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the uh, endpoint. So let's copy that. And note here, there's no inputs. A get call, we just have to make the uh, request and it will return data. So this is quite a simple one. Okay, so what we want to do is we're going to come in and put in the API uh, URL into the field here. And we're going to make, in this case, it is a get call, but I could change that to post, put, or delete. Now, what we don't have here is the actual environment that we're going to call. So we're going to put that in. Now, I could put that in, and I could literally say, this is the environment, and then this is the API I'm going to call in that environment. So I could make that explicit. Now, because this call doesn't actually require uh, any body, then all we have to do now is come to the output and put in we want to return a response, which will be the value will be dollar response. And this will be the same for pretty much all calls that you make. And then literally we could come and click on send and that will make the call. So it's gonna send to this particular endpoint to get the data. We're mapping into the response, which returns the data here, which is actually user details. Now, what we could do is actually say, if I want to be able to test this against different environments, I could actually take out that URL and instead put in three brackets, URL with three closing brackets. And then on the input, I could come up and say URL. So this is my URL. And then I could map in and say, I want to use, in this case, the environment here. So I could map that as an input. And this is particularly important if you want to, let's say, use, as we're going to look at it in a bit, environment and variables that you want to map in. Let's say this could be my production, but then, for instance, if I wanted to map in a parameter, a variable, then I can actually have different inputs, which let's say I could have based on different environments I'm running. I'm just going to leave this for now as the, uh, as the, um, environment here, the, the explicit value. And again, when I click on send, what it's now doing is populating from the inputs to map in here, the URL based on this value, makes the call and returns the response for me. So now I validated this work that I put it together, I could then click on create. Now note that in here, you have got the ability to put in different details, authorization. So does it need a bearer token? doesn't need username and password, which will be mapped in, or are there custom authorizations to be set? This one doesn't need any authorization. We can also set up the body. So if this requires, let's say, to post some data, then we might be putting details into the body. So if we come up next to the API folder, click on the three dots and click new request. In this case, let's set up uh, a post call. So let's call this post user, for example. Now in this, I'm gonna be mapping my input again, which will be a URL, which I'm gonna put from the rec res. So I'm gonna start off my endpoint with three brackets, URL, and close those brackets. I'm gonna be making a post call, which now has populated headers with a content type automatically. So now let's go and get our uh, endpoint that we're gonna uh, go and call with a post call. Okay, so in this case, if you see, we're gonna use this uh, create uh, post call, which actually enables us to post some user details which should be created and will return an ID. So first of all, we're gonna need to have the request which is slash uh, API slash users 
And then we're going to need to copy the body as well, because that needs to be sent with the API call. You're posting data to a particular endpoint. And then when that's received, it's processed. And in this case, returns the ID and the creation date. So let's copy that. And then let's go back and populate that into our API call. So let's go and put in, we had to have API slash users. So that's our endpoint. And then in the body, we're going to copy in the payload that we're going to be mapping in. Now note that I've got explicit values, but again here, I could change this, let's say to bracket, bracket, bracket. I can make this name, for example, map name here, and I could put in Morpheus. Again, when we look at using data, this is gonna enable us to actually say we could map in details of the header, which is particularly useful when we come to look at advanced sequential API calls to be able to map parameters between APIs. We'll be looking at that in another module. For now, I'm just gonna go ahead and create this. Again, I map my output, so always response and then dollar $response. So I've now got my inputs, which is mapping my URL and also a value which I'm putting into the body in name. The, it's a post call, so I've got my URL and the endpoint. Uh, the headers have been populated and then I've populated a, a body here. And again, if I need an authorization, then I can map those in. So now having done that, I've also mapped my response. Let's click on send. And we see by doing that, we get a 201 success and we're returned with an ID and a creation date. And again, let's go ahead and create that. So now what I've done is set up two API calls. But now the point of this is not actually to just simply make API calls to test that, yes, they are working. So the point is not to come in here and click send and just validate the API call in isolation. What I can do here now is if I come across to my project dashboard, let's create a new goal. Let's call this API test. And again, let's do this against our rocket shop .virtuoso .qa. So what I'm doing now is I've come in live authoring is running and I am creating a new test. So if I add a checkpoint, let's, uh, let's say add to basket. I can, let's put in first a wait for, let's say comment integration. I can come and click and let's um, now go click on add to bag. Let's also click on shopping bag. Let's wait for go to checkout. And then let's use click on checkout. I notice I'm just combining a few different ways of writing steps, but also um, uh, clicking to interact with those. And let's finally say wait for guest checkout. So you're seeing here, I'm creating a functional test. I'm just interacting based on the interface as a user would. If I add a checkpoint now and say API calls, what I can do here now is I could say API, which then shows me the two API calls that I've built. So let's do API call create users. Now I could map inputs, which means if I had stored a parameter here, like an order number, I could map that in. And I can do that by just having two brackets. And then let's say if I had a, a variable order ID, I could map that in. And I would map that as my inputs at the API call. There are none here. So you always just put, even if uh, you're not putting anything, you just put open bracket, close bracket, and then returning dollar response. When I click on save, we go ahead and perform the API call. So it's gonna go through and you see it's gone green. If we click on that and go to the side effects, you can see in the data of the response, we've now got user details. So the great thing here, and we're gonna be looking at this, how you use test data is now I could actually be using that data in my test. We're gonna look at that in a separate module. For now, you can see I could also come in and add a step and say API, post user, open and close brackets because I'm not mapping any other inputs. And again, returning response, just follows the same model each time. Click on save. And now what I'm gonna do is post data. You can see these inputs are taken from where I've mapped them already in my API manager. So they're populated because they're mapped at the uh, input. And again, if I see the side effects by clicking on that, I can see that I've posted details and I have returned the ID and the creation date here. So you can see I've combined my functional tests with being able to make API calls in there by building those 
at the API manager level and then calling them into my tests.